Welcome to networking class for today. And my name is Anani Ej Kaleb, and this is networking and data communication. So today we are looking at some of the courses. This is our first lecture, and the first topic we'll be treating today is introduction to communication systems. Then we will look at introduction to network uh, computer networks. We will also look at network models. We will look at some of the physical layers. That is the guided media. Then we'll look at the unguided media. This is just for basics of computer networking. So just for you to get yourself a little bit knowledge about what computer network is all about. So let's look at the fundamentals of communication systems and communication networking. Let's look at it. So the first thing we'll be looking at is what is communication systems, some of the basic terminologies. And after reading this course, students should be able to understand some of the basic concepts of communication systems. Students should be able to identify and describe the fundamental component of computer networks. Then they should be able to describe some of the benefits associated with the use of computer network. What is even the purpose for establishing a computer network? Then also we identify some of the networking devices and discuss their functions. We will look at some of the different types of what we call network topologies. Okay, we'll describe what are the network topologies and how they look like. So let's go straight to what is data communication. When we talk about data communication, we are referring to the movement of information from one point to another. So let me use human beings as an example. When me being an individual and you also being an individual, when I talk, something leaves me, that is a voice, leaves my mouth and it's carried to you and you can hear whatever message that I communicated, either through voice or through a sign or a signal, but whatever way I'm able to pass a message from myself to you becomes a communication. So in terms of computers, computers are also able to communicate or are able to send kind of signal to other computer systems or computer devices for them to also understand them. So, and this one is done through electrical or optical transmission systems. So when we talk about data communication, we are referring to the movement of computer information from one point to another by the means of electrical or optical transmission. So the communication is passed from one computer to another in a form of electrical currents, okay? So you cannot actually see with your naked eye, but there is actually something that happens between the two computers that are, uh, the, whilst they are trying to communicate together. And such systems are often, that's what we refer to as data communication networks. And we are saying that the main reason behind joining or networking, the basic term of what I'm going to use networking is when we link two computers together, when they are able to communicate among themselves. And what we are saying is that the reason why we do that is for these two computers to be able to share information among themselves. Now, let me use this as a simple example. Why are you holding the phone that you are holding? You are holding it not for yourself alone, not to be playing game or whatever uh, whatever thing you might want to do on the phone, but for you to be able to communicate with other mobile phones across. That is calling them, sending them XMS or sending them a WhatsApp messages or sometimes even playing an online game with other colleagues. So indirectly, you are reaching out to other phones so what we are saying here is that data communication networks the more um, the most important reason why we set up a network is for a more efficient use of computers and to improve 
our day-to-day -day control of business by providing a faster information flow. So most of the time, I want to use the banks. Or the ba Let me use the bank, for example. If you are working in a bank and if a customer walks to your desk and there is an information you need that you need to always get up from your computer and walk to the next desk for it, it will slow down your day activity. But most of the time, they are able to either make a simple phone call or they're able to send a simple email within a split of a, 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 a time, then there will be a response, helping them to communicate among themselves and reaching out to each other and getting information in a very fast, in a, in a faster manner. So what we are seeing here is that data communication facilitates more efficient use of computer and improve the day-to-day -day control of business by providing a faster information flow. And that is the main reason why we use um, um, computer networks. Then also, it also helps them to be able to transfer messages like I just showed, I just said, I uh, made mention of. So they are able to send messages in a form of an email, in a form of a chat, in a form of a video streaming, that is a Skype call, a Zoom call, or any of these WhatsApp video call, or whatever means that they want to use. If that is what is that is what demands at that particular moment, it makes it easier. Just within this period of this corona pandemic situation, realize that people all over the world are finding ways and means of communicating among themselves. And most of the platform that they are using is this kind of Zoom and Skype system to be able to communicate among themselves. So it makes it easier. People can stay anywhere across the globe and yet still able to communicate. So when we talk about um, the, some of the uh, terms that we, we want to look at, the next one is telecommunication. Tele communication this is a broader term that includes the transmission of voice and video as well as, as data but in this particular sense it implies a longer distances okay that is what we refer to as telecommunication that is why we are able to have our tv uh, 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 devices in the house and we are able to receive transmission from far places on your screen so you can have multi tv dstv being streamed across maybe somewhere across the globe or maybe within the country, but from a far distance, and you are able to receive both the video and audio at the same time. So we call it a telecommunication uh, system. So the next term on our bill is communication systems. Let's look at communication systems. When we talk about communication systems, we are referring to um, the electronic systems, okay? that transmits data from one location to the other the electronic systems okay so your computer system your phones that are connected to the network that are able to send information from one location to another so in our simple network diagram here we have various computer devices that are connected so these are the communication systems okay these are the communication systems on the network then also we have what we call communication channel communication channel um it is the medium that carries the message now let's go back to our simple network diagram in this simple network diagram from pc1 to the switch which is in the middle here and from uh, from PC0 to the switch here, and from PC2 to the switch, the same applies to PC1 and PC3. You can see a black line, and in this case, we are referring that is the, it's a cable connection, and there is a wireless access point here or a wireless um, device here that a laptop is connecting, and you can see the connection from the laptop to the wireless medium is a it's a wireless connection, okay. It's a wireless connection so that is the medium this one is connecting to this device in a wireless mode and this one is connected to this central point in a, a, a wired mode so that is the channel so we have two types in the, in our later lecture we'll be looking at the guided media and unguided media we call wired 
cables or normal network cables as guided media because you can decide actually decide where to plug your network cable and which device to plug it in but when it comes to wireless transmission anytime a wireless transmission is given is broadcasted or is around any connecting device that has a wireless medium can come can connect example is the fm station we don't have any cable coming from the various fm stations to our various homes but so far as you have a radio that you can tune into the signal of the fm station you will be able to hear whatever the radio station is being transmitting so the radio station cannot prevent somebody from getting access to their uh, their transmission so it is an unguided transmission that is out there but ecg can decide not to bring a cable to your house because it is guided they decide where they will take the cable which will take time to look at it so the the, the various medium through which we come uh, we can send a message is what we call the communication channels then anytime you hear the word connectivity okay connectivity just like um you go to an internet cafe and you try to connect your computer to their network or to their wireless network or whatever network they have you connect to it or sometimes um, um, um you connect your phone to a wireless network and say, oh so um, I, i'm connected so the ability for a microcomputer or any of these smart devices to be able to connect with other computer devices and to be able to communicate so connectivity is the capability of a microcomputer or probably any other um, um, communication device system that are able to share information with other computer system that is what we refer to as connectivity now these connections include internet connection it can be either through a telephone lines or through a cable or through the thin air when we talk about the air through the air that is the wireless connection which i just showed you in our simple network diagram then in every um, network connectivity is what we call a network so central to the concept of connectivity is a network and that is the basic for this very course and we will take time to look at it in details now apart from we being able to connect there are something we call connection devices for us to be able to connect something must mediate or something must be able to help us to be able to connect now when a message we just said that whenever communication is happening on a network is being transmitted in a form of electrical current and there are analog current and there are digital current but there are devices that are able to convert this kind of um, transmission from machines either from analog to digital or from digital to analog and these devices is what we refer to as connection devices so connection devices convert all outgoing messages into packets that can travel across a network channel and reverse the process for incoming message anytime we we'll look at a packet that is leaving a computer to another computer very soon so this is our simple network diagram or topology and assuming pc0 here wants to send message all the way to pc3 the message will pass through this medium or this uh, channel before it gets to the uh, what do you call it uh, the other computer system so connection devices anytime a message is being sent from one location to the other there are always an intermediate uh, a mediating device that converts the messages for the other machine to be able to um, able to read it but anyway whilst we move along we are going to show ourselves a real life or a real time network where we'll be able to see some of these things clearly okay so we talk about connection devices and we are saying that 
um, they convert all outgoing messages into packets that can travel across a network so whenever a message is being sent it might be too big we'll look at what is packet very soon and they are broken down into small smaller pieces and they are sent across various um, channels for the message to be able to get to its um, final destination okay now let's look at what we call communication channels okay communication channels now we looked at the various the the, the 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 medium through which communication is being sent now when we talk about channels we can as just like the medium we can look at it as either a physical um, channel or a wireless channel the physical is mostly referred to as the wired okay the physical is mostly referred to as the wired and it include what we call the twisted pair cable we'll look at some of them um, them in the jiffy so twisted pair cable the cosier cable the fiber optic cable so let's look at a picture of all those ones here so this is a cosier cable okay um and you mostly know it as your the cable that we use to connect our tvs okay the tv cable or the one we use to do our home satellite so that is cosier cable so this is also a twisted pair cable and um pair the name twisted you can see how cables are twisted within the various um, uh, uh, strands or how they have been uh, twisted uh, inside so this is a twisted pair cable and these are this is also fiber optic cables okay fiber optic cable we'll look at it into details very soon what fiber optic cables are so these are pictures of fiber optic cables that are being used and it transmits data in a form of electrical a light in the form of a light it doesn't use electrical signal it uses it transmit data in the form of a light and currently that is the fastest um, um, communication channel around the globe so we'll look at it very soon the details of it so we have just looked at the twisted pair cable we have looked at the cosier cable we have looked at the fiber optic cables so fiber optic as i said transmit data as pulses of light through a tiny tubes of glass and we'll look at it very soon anytime there is a communication there is a model there is always a source of the transmission there is something um, there is a transmitter that converts the data into transmittable signal there is a transmission system which will look at it then we will look at um, the, the receiver that converts the signal into a data then a destination that takes the incoming message so let's look at this simple um, diagram here up here we have our source we have our transmitter we have our transmission system receiver and destination let's look at this simple analogy or simplified communication model diagram here let's look at it from this angle now there is a workstation assuming you are in front of your computer and you want to browse something like facebook.com or google or any of these websites across the globe immediately you enter on your computer www.facebook.com you might be connected to a modem either a wireless modem or a wireless access point or you might be connected to a usb modem or any of these um, internet connection uh, connecting uh, uh, devices which is giving you connection to the internet now the transmission is the tra the connection uh, the signal or the message that you send that is when you enter www.facebook.com it's a signal that you are passing from your computer is being converted by this modem here through the the modem converts it and it goes through out the international network that is all over the globe various uh, switches and hubs across the world then when the the message gets to the final destination which might be the server it might be the facebook server or google server or any of these servers across the world they are also connected to a particular kind of communication device or um, a modem or some kind of internet connectivity and whilst your message that leaves your computer gets there the modem also transfer or convert it into 
a different um, 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 signal. The ones that the server here will be able to understand. And if the server is replying, it goes through the same kind of um, um, communication before you now get a, a reply back on your screen. So whenever you enter www.facebook.com and you are waiting for the page to appear on your screen, it goes through this type of, um, um, uh, what do you call it? This type of uh, model, or it goes through this kind of channels. It goes through different types of modem for conversion. It passes through the international network that is the worldwide kind of network with different switches and hubs and routers all over the world and it gets to the final destination the final destination also receives the message and reply through the same channel but it happens in the speed of in the fastest way that is why you don't actually see it so the next thing we want to look at is what we call circuit switching circuit switching We'll be looking at what we call circuit switching and packet switching. But the first one here is what we call the circuit switching. Circuit switching is a transmission technique in which a complete point-to-point -point circuit has to be assembled before communication can proceed. A typical example is our telephone systems. Okay, anytime. Uh, normal telephone lines I'm not talking about the mobile phone era I'm talking about the telephone lines whenever somebody is calling another telephone line the various uh, telecommunication companies what they do is that they have to establish a link they have to establish a link from the one who is calling and the one who is receiving the call so whenever they have an available link, that is when the call can go through. And as soon as the link is established, nobody can interfere in that link unless they have or they have hung up the call. That is why previously, when we were using the normal telephone lines, when you are on a call, nobody can call you through. The, nobody can call again unless you are finished with your call because they were using something we call a lease line. Now let's look at um, a typical example, as I said, is a telephone system. In a circuit switching, computer network use leased dedicated telephone circuit to communicate with other computers in remote location. That is location that are not close or probably somewhere far away from itself. So these dedicated circuit techniques were very expensive and wasted a lot of communication capacity. That's why I said. If somebody gets on the line, nobody can get back on it again unless those two people have finished their communication. So the circuit was maintained regardless of whether any data were being sent or not. So this led to what we call packet switching. So let's look at a, a simple simulation on how the circuit switching is done. This is what a typical traditional telephone networks look like. The PSTA networks are connected through central offices, which act as a telephone exchanges, each serving a certain geographical area. When a person A calls a person B, for example, the telephone network is trying different circuits to find an available channel. A connection must be established before they start their conversations. Once the channel is decided, it guarantees the full bandwidth and remains connected for the duration of the communication session until users terminate their connection. When you are making PSTN call or traditional telephone call, you are actually renting the lines. That's why international telephone call or long distance telephone call was expensive. Okay, so that is just a simple demonstration of how circuit switching is done. So in circuit switching, you realize that telephone A trying to call somebody at a, a different destination so these are various destinations maybe across the world okay or across the globe 
So when A wants to call B, the telephone companies will need to make sure there is an available line or available what we call circuit. So they establish a line. It can be either through this one here, through the top here, through this here, through here, through this here, and to B. So any which any line that is available for communication. So they have to establish it before those two people will be able to communicate among themselves and it was it's very expensive to maintain that and that is what brought about what we call packet switching now let's look at packet switching in unlike circuit switching which we just looked at packet switching is also another technique to disseminate information but in this sense instead of the message being sent uh, uh, through one particular circuit or through one particular line or channel the packet switching is so intelligent that the files that are being sent or the file that is being sent is sliced into smaller pieces so that it can be transmitted across different channels and when the file reaches its final destination it is being reassembled to form the file again. So packet switching is a transmission technique in which digital messages are sliced into parcel or smaller pieces that we refer to it as packets. And it is sent along different communication paths as they become available. These packets are then reassembled once they all arrive at their final destination. And there are different um, packet size depending on the communication standard being used so based on the uh, particular communication standard that you are using or the channel that you are using will determine the size of the packet that will be sent across so if you are using a twisted pair cable if you're on a twisted pair cable network it's because of the speed it can decide to um, slice it into a particular sizes then if you're using a fiber which is quite faster than the twisted pair cable it also has its own sizes that it will slice the file into so the packets this uh, the packet include information for directing the packet to the right address for checking transmission errors and among uh, 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 along with the data so whilst the files are being sliced though it's being sent across different um it's sent across different channels to its final destination yet all the files that have been sliced have been tagged with a destination address so irrespective of whichever route the packet uses it will still end up going to its final destination and it's a very good um, 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 system or is a very good thing because it helps in security which we'll be looking at it uh, in the in our subsequent lectures so let's see a simple um simulation with regards to this particular uh, packet switching packet switching uses different methods packet switching networks are connected through many routers each is serving different segment of networks data is broken into packets before it is transported in packet switching, packets can travel any path on the network to their destination because each packet contains an IP address and sequencing information. Therefore, they don't need to follow each other. They can travel any network path and they can find the fastest channel available at any instant. They don't need to arrive in sequence because they can reassemble together at the destination. The internet is based on a packet switching protocol, TCP IP. So as you can see on the screen right now, we have a particular data that is supposed to be sent across the network. And whilst we were preparing to send a particular data is to be sent from destination a to destination b 
and it is broken into smaller pieces like in one two three four different pieces and they are synced and it doesn't necessarily have to pass through the, sa the same um, routes or follow the same order so it goes in different routes and different directions and it are, uh, uh, its final destination is the computer B here so it will come in pieces and when it arrives it doesn't have to arrive in in sequential order it comes in any way and when it gets to the final destination it reassembles the file again and the file now becomes the complete data that we were sending across so that is how the packet switching is done so with this simple um, um, sl um, diagram here just like i showed you in the simulation the this is the actual data um, data that needs to be sent and is broken down into smaller pieces so each of the pieces uses its own roots to or its own circuit to get to its final and this is the final destination the final destination is over here so it's broken down into pieces packet one packet two packet three and when it finally gets to its final destination you realize that packet two seems to be getting to its destination earlier than all the other packets but yet when it gets to the final destination it's being reassembled into its original format or original form as you can see from the left side of the diagram so that is how packet switching is okay now let's take a little um let's go a little bit deeper into the packet switching and circuit switching and understand some few things here we are saying that in packet switching packet switching make um, a much more efficient use of communication capacity this is because we don't allow unlike um, circuit switching where a single line is dedicated to only two people to use at a time but this one all lines are available for everyone and packets can travel in any um, available lines that are available so it makes more efficient use of communication capacity um, of a network just like maybe we have the Accra Kumasi road whereby if somebody wants to travel he has to get to his, his destination before any other person is allowed to use the road which is quite b bad so with this everybody is allowed to use the road as far as the, the road is available for people to travel so data are gathered from many users and divided into smaller packets and transmitted over available communication channels using the various routers and we are saying that each packet travels independently through these networks just like i showed you in the simulation that it doesn't need to uh, actually follow a sequential order they travel through each different um, 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 uh, independently through this uh, tra travel uh, independently and when it gets the final destination it's being reassembled again packets of data originating at one source can be routed through many different paths and the networks before being reassembled into its original message and when they reach their destination we it, we it reassembles it as i have already indicated and we are also saying that packet switching doesn't require a dedicated circuit unlike the packet switching where an end-to-end -end kind of connection needs to be established before a communication will be uh, will, will, will happen so packet switching does not require a dedicated circuit but can make use of any spare capacity that is available so if some lines are disabled or too busy the packet can still be sent over by uh, to any uh, its destination point without any interaction so without any interruption so we can look at it from our diagram here assuming our uh, line here the um, first packet the, the the route that the first packet used is down it doesn't mean communication will not happen it the communication packet one will now come and use any of the available ones maybe use the one that packet two used or it will use the one that packet three used all in the name of getting to its final destination so two or more packets can travel through the same path and communication will still be okay so that is packet switching so thank you this is the end of today's lecture and i hope to see you in our unit two
Thank you.